Hello everyone, it's a great pleasure to have you on the show. This is your four walls and I am Mr. Adolf. Before we move on, take a look at the green board. For the green board, we will do what is almost a book review, a fictional novel titled Brotherhood of Book Hunters. This is mainly to stimulate the reading culture in you. Then I will do a preface to the topic of the show, which is school and chess. For the examination, a young master of chess game is taking the pawns to schools with a new approach and he is going to explain all his reasons right here. After that comes grading, then we we'll move on to the assignment. Right now, let's see news updates on education. According to Vanguard, former president of Nigeria Dr. Lushegun Basanjo on Thursday resumed work at the Abiyokuta Ogun State the, um, Study Center of the National Open University of Nigeria. He became the facilitator of students, especially for the final year students. So Obasanjo met two final year students of Christian theology assigned to him by the university for supervision. The two students are Elijah Egehe D. OK and Toriola Abigail. The former president will also serve as an academic counsel for students. Obasanjo recently bagged a PhD on Christian theology from now, making him the first PhD holder from the university and at his age. That's wonderful. So, for the second news, according to Punch newspaper, Chief Executive Officer Hima International Education Services, Dr. Ema Agubia De Etebet, has urged parents, schools, and caregivers to ensure pupils have tools to help them internalize what they have been taught in school, particularly those that prepare them for leadership and entrepreneurship. Agubia De Etebet made this known recently at a briefing at Silver Sands Hall School. Lagos, where she unveiled the limited edition of the Chairman Empire. That Chairman Empire is a board game that, according to her, internalizes the principles of economics you know, in peoples. Designed for children from age 7 upward, the CEO said the game, which is a marriage between entertainment and education, was the latest product from HEMA that took players through the nitty-gritty of modern business practices, including the relationship between buyers and sellers. In her words, I quote, Our modern-day re reality shows that job opportunities are drying up. That is why many graduates still roam the streets in search of jobs many years after graduation. A child brought up with the idea that he or she could establish and run a business may just have his or her mind attuned to being their own business uh, bosses after university education instead of searching for non-existent jobs um, in the society that's end of quote so we'll take a quick break when we return i will be doing a little introduction into a book that you must read which i call almost a book review don't go away i'll be right back Welcome back. Speaking of the uh, almost a book review that I'm going to be doing with you right now, it's a book written by Raphael Jerusalem. Jerusalem is actually from Jerusalem in um, Israel. Um, this book was written and published in November 2014, but it became popular, especially this year, 2018. Has only 256 pages. Brotherhood of Book Hunters. What do you get when one of your favorite authors, just like Jerusalem, decides to take you on a finalized history with a continuation that is weaved around fictional intrigues, adventure, intelligent criminality? And the answer is a massive dramatic masterpiece. That's what you get with this book. Jerusalem found great interest in the true life story of the best known French poet um, of late Middle Age, a man also famous for being a thief. His name was Francois Villon. In the year 1463, a year after being arrested and sentenced to death for his crimes, somehow Villon got released and forced into exile. Nobody actually knew what happened, how he got released, or what made the government of the period to release him and force him into exile. 
So after that, no one actually seemed to know what happened to him, where he went to, what happened. So there is no other record anywhere to tell what more about Francois Villon. But author Jerusalemi takes this sketchy information and builds a superb fictional continuation for Villon involving King Louis VI. He wishes to undermine the office of Pope in Rome in order to move the center of Christendom to France by using many members, both in secret and uh, in public. He fabricated what, is, what was called Brotherhood of Book Hunters. So this brotherhood includes powerful people such as the Medici family. I understand that the Medici family in the Italian world were a very strong, powerful family. They were powerful in politics, in economics, as well as um, lowly booksellers, chronicle printers, and a wide network of Jewish and Christian theologians, and even their students, who have been collecting books and manuscripts from across the known world. Villon joins this gang in exchange for his freedom. That is, telling the story from where it actually stopped in history. Jerusalem, Raphael Jerusalem picked up the story, talking about how his freedom came to be, because nobody knows. Then he decides to do a fiction, a continuation of this man's um, story, Francois Villon. He, he decided to craft out a sketchy, a sketchy but exciting story of how his freedom was gained. So, for Villon, together with his good friend and uh, fellow criminal, he, who was also his bodyguard, Colin de Cayo, the scheme takes them both away from their beloved Paris as far as the Holy Land. They were, you know, going in search of books and prints, articles, anything that would defy the strength and standard of the Catholic Church. So, when this whole thing were going on, you know, for the single act, it was capable of destabilizing the world order and theological formation. And you know, at that period in time, talking about the medieval age, the Catholic were so strong. They were like the world power, the people controlling the economy, controlling beliefs and everything. So if you have anything against the Catholic belief, you will either be killed, you will either be sent on exile. That is the most merciful that you can get. So at, the, at this backdrop, combined with all the political and struggle for uniting all branches of Christian churches of the time, Villain and Colin enter a world filled with even more intrigues and danger than they ever experienced in their former criminal lives. This leaves the door wide open for the author to usher in a lot of plot twists, which is just what you would expect from a rousing adventure story. And this is just what you get when you pick up the book, Brotherhood of Book Hunters. Jerusalem did a great justice to, you know, the plot. He built the plot perfectly. They are all independent. They all have their secrecies and ambitions. And they're very sharp. They are not just um, characters that you can forget in the plot. They are so interwoven. Everybody is connected in as much as they are coming from different backgrounds and different backstories. So that is it. Then there is another beautiful thing about Jerusalem. He didn't employ much of dialogue in his story. All you would get to see is action after action. The action that keeps turning the pages. It's wonderful. So you go grab this book and read it because if you're the one who likes history, you're the one who likes um, adventure, intrigues and suspense, all of that then let's talk more action. Go and pick up this book. It's stimulating and it's, it's something that also questions the theologian others and ancient world beliefs, even up till now, as religion affects our decisions today. This kind of book is also thought-provoking. Let me quickly give you a, a little background to the topic that I'm going to be discussing with my guest as soon as I return from the commercial break. Now, only recently, the gaps between teaching and learning process in Nigerian schools are continuously and increasingly disappearing, thanks to the growing number of efficient educationists, researchers, and scholars who are making learning a little more exciting and thrilling with diverse education inventions. However, among several inventions in education, rumor has it now that the chess game could help 
improve powerful learning abilities and equip the learners with sharper minds to take on tedious activities within the four walls. So you would ask, ordinary chess game would be able to do that? When we return, I'll be introducing you to my special guest. You're welcome back. I told you that chess game is penetrating schools and people are beginning to identify with chess game. But then, apart from other games that people see as leisure, if chess game is now being seen as something that's going to help educational system, especially assisting in teaching and learning processes within the four walls, why is that? Who is making this research? Why is chess game so relevant at this point in time? That's why I brought on the show the man who calls himself Master of Chess, Solomon Israel. Uh, You're you. welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Solomon. Yeah. Chess game, I, I never played chess when okay. I was in school. So hearing about chess penetrating schools now, helping in teaching and learning processes, it's becoming confusing because basketball didn't you know, come into learning processes of football and stuff. They were just seen as leisure time, especially when you're preparing for into mm -hmm. house sports. Now, chess game. What is about chess game? Yeah, chess is a is a mind game. It's an indoor kind of game for um, very people see chess as a game played by very intelligent people. Really? Yes. That is always the mindset of people. And for some people who are very ignorant about the game, they think uh, playing chess is more like gambling and stuff because they are ignorant about the game. But those who are enlightened about the game see it as a very intellectual game, which they encourage their children to take part in it. And also it helps to boost children's mental powers and it helps their thinking ability. So chess is a very, very wonderful game, and it's a very versatile game. In fact, it's a game people usually study. I'll put it that way. It's, it's a game you need to study to even know how to play to an extent. So chess is a very, very interesting game. Every game in the world you need to study. Yes. You then you begin to take it step by step, step by understanding step. the game. Yeah. You say chess, you need to study. It's a game for the intelligent people. Yes. Other games, for example, the video games, you need to be intelligent enough to be able to put that game under control. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right, yes. But chess is a different ball game to video games. Now, the, the effect of video games to the mind is that it, it, doesn't, it, it does more harm than good on the long run. Unlike chess? Unlike chess, yes. Chess could be addictive. Yes, but it's to an advantage when you're addictive to chess. But when you're becoming addictive to video games, then it is something else. Because your focus now is no longer on something that will be productive. Although I've seen situations where um, people encourage video games. Yeah, I was watching a program where they actually did, um, they, they did a... a, a uh, should I say, they, they always do review about video games. They tell you more about the video games. They tell you tricks. They tell you um, cheats on the video games and stuff like that. Chess too, they also do the same thing. But chess is another level of game. In fact, I don't call chess a game to me. What do you call it? I call it something of academics. It's something educational. So what connects chess? Because what I would see is a piece of board, you know, with uh, blocks. Yes. With different <laughs> colors. Then the things that you call pawns that you have to move. Yeah. I don't even know when you're winning or losing. Okay. How would this board and the pawns on them and the movement that is going on on the board help intellectually within the four walls? How? Good. Now, this is how it works. The pawns, they, okay, just like you said, pawns, that I believe that is the only thing you know. That is the only, That's the only thing I know <laughs> on the board. Okay, all right. Now, there are other pieces on the board, too. Now, on each side of the board, there are just two colors we have on the board. We have the black and the white. It's always the game of the black against the white. So, you only have two players in control. Okay, so now, the game of chess is all about dominance. Okay. okay. Yes, you... 
who can think fast. Alright, now before you can win chess game, there's something they call four thoughts. You have to think ahead. So thinking ahead is a skill you develop while playing chess. Alright, so that's an advantage. Now and if you can do that while playing chess, why wouldn't it be possible doing that during education? Do you know there is a research that was carried on on chess? That chess actually improves a student's ability to solve mathematical questions. Really? Yes. That it, it was carried out in... Um, uh, Maybe, sorry, when okay. you begin to break this down, especially okay. the pawns, because they are very interesting sculptures too. Yeah. Talking about how chess would help a child improve with um, mathematics and stuff. Mm -hmm. Those pawns, do they have explanations? Do they have stories behind them? Yes, the, the piece have stories behind them, yes. They all have stories behind them. And this is how it is done. The one you call pawns are usually the ones in front. Okay, now there are other pieces behind. Now we have the major piece and the minor piece. So the pawns are categorized as a minor piece also. And there are also other minor pieces with the major piece. Okay, now from the, um, from the right and the left, we have the rook. Right, that is always at the end point of it. Now, after the rook, we have the knight, the one that looks like the Aussie kind of thing. Okay, and then beside this, the knight, the two knights, we also have two bishops. Okay, okay, now beside the bishops, there you have the king, and then you have the queen. All right, so looks that is like how. looks like a human society here. Yes, yeah, something like that. That is how it looks. It looks like a human society. It's, it's, let, me, let me trace, let me give you a brief history about chess. Okay. Yeah, uh, chess originated actually from India. Okay, so this chess game wasn't actually called chess back then. There's, there was a special name they called it, they called it Chatarunga. Chatarunga. Yes, back then in India. Okay, now many historians have different stories about chess. You read many books, you have. So many stories about chess, many histories Sorry, about what chess. Sorry, period, what period was this? Okay, I think that was in uh, um, 600 AD in India. It's oh. a very, the game is as old as, it's a very, very old game. Now, this game was a game played by a man that fights war back then. So it's more like a game of warfare. That's why if you listen to my first explanation, I told you it was about dominance. It's a game of dominance, okay? So before you can be able to dominate your other person, your counterpart, your enemy, all right, you must be able to think ahead. Right? So you who wants to win a war has to do what? You have to think ahead. And strategize. And strategize. Yes, that is it. So chess really helps you to strategize. It, deals, it helps you plan ahead. So children will have to know something of, okay, all right, I'm involved with chess. Okay, good. That means it helps me plan. So if I now bring it to a normal um the 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 outside world all right now i want to execute something definitely i have to plan because if i don't plan i will fail all right same thing with chess if you don't plan well you will fail all right so chess is all about dominance and before you can win a game of chess you have to plan ahead so that you can be able to overcome your enemy piece all right now let me go back to the history i think i've deviated all right, now, uh, the chess piece was not called, the real names are just called... Chatarunga. Yes, it? it was actually called Chatarunga. Now, the piece is there. The piece there, we're not really called the new names we are calling it. It wasn't called pawns and the rest. Okay. Okay, now, the pawns were usually called the foot soldiers. Okay. Then. Now, the king and the queen, the king was referred to as a Raju. And the queen was a mantri. Called a mantri. And then the, uh, the rook which happens to be at the far end of the board, yes. they were called the knights. Can you see that? They called them the knights. While the, the, the us, we are called, um, um, uh, what's that name again? Okay, let me go to the, the bishops. The bishops were called the elephants. All right. So um, the knights had a... The, the, how did all this name, what, what point did all this name begin to change and who began to change these names? Yeah, the name changed in the 15th century when the game was brought down to Europe. All oh, right, that's why they begin to yes. see the European culture yes. taking over the, the game. Begin, yes, the game. Does that explain that um, the 
Indians got their hands off from the game absolutely? No, nobody. The game continues. The game is as old as I can't say. I cannot say it's as old as man. We will okay. hold it there when okay. we we'll come back. Right. We'll go deeper into the chess game, okay. especially talking about schools involvement. When we return, we'll be talking about chess and school proper. How school is beginning to accept the game of chess. Don't go away. I'll be right back. Hello and welcome back. Still with Solomon Israel chess game master and we are going to be talking about the school proper so solomon you you you're a teacher first and yes, foremost yeah aside being chess coach chess, yeah you said you're going to be meeting with schools mm -hmm. so you've you've have you started yeah i started with some schools and I, i've been going to some churches Churches too. Yes, to to teach the game, to introduce the game. How did you come up with the idea of taking this thing to yeah. schools? Okay, I discovered the education in Nigeria was becoming too boring for children, so I thought about okay, let me infuse something that will make education very interesting, because I discovered children like it when there is fun around education. We are creating fun around us. There are so many excursion programs. We've got so many toys and so many things built around schools these days. Why? How do you think that chess can compete with all these inventions that we have on ground already? Yeah, it depends on the kind of package any chess master will use. Okay, now this is the kind of package I use. After three months, I take my student out on excursion to places... I show them, sometimes it could be a museum, I just take them around and show them some historical um, things and stuff like that. And also, I try to make them understand that chess will help them on the long run when it comes to the educational aspect. Okay, now I actually did a test run one time like that um, some months ago uh, in, in a school. I decided to do chess and math period okay i usually do it every saturday okay i do mathematics class for one hour 30 minutes and then chairs for 30 minutes i was surprised the kind of people that turned up you know, i saw a lot of children they were so excited in fact when it comes to the time of the chess game you see the excitement in them they just want to play okay so i'm usually very happy to see such excitement because it it tells me, okay, these children are really ready for this. They want to play, they want to learn. In fact, I told them many histories about chess. I showed them some videos, some movies, just to encourage them that this game is very, very good. Because the game, Nigeria is just taking a part of it. They are trying to inculcate an habit in playing chess. How are parents relating to this? Some parents are not even taking it. They are taking it lightly. Some parents are not showing interest. Okay, it's now that is when it now becomes a job for us. People like us start educating parents on it. Like, come, this game can actually help your children. Your children that his score has always been way down before. Do you know his scores can actually increase? Now, I'm trying to be practical because chess is practical. Okay, it's not fictional. It's practical. It happens because chess, uh, there has been research on chess, that chess is really good for children. Please, make sure your children play chess. Make sure your children get involved any in chess. Any side effects, any side effect at all about this chess? If there is any side effect, then the side effect is that it decreases your chance of having a brain malfunction. <laughs> I, 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 so, I wouldn't expect you to say less. But then, so I, that I, is the only side effect. If I'm I a know. teacher in the class okay. and I know that my children are also preparing to go for some kind of chess game, mm -hmm. wouldn't I be worried that the, the chess game might be taking a lot of their times for study? Yeah, that is another, that is another challenge that we are facing. Some, some proprietors or some headmistress or some people, some parents who are not very enlightened about the game will be like, ah! Come, if I get my children involved in this, they will not be reading, they will That's not be different. going to school, they will not be doing the assignment. All they will be doing is play, 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 play. And they will be like, no, madam, it's not so. There is time for everything. This is not video games. 
Okay, this is chess. There is nobody that says chess is... There is no way you will hear in the world they will say chess is bad. In fact, it even help your children even become better than they were. I want to hold you by your word. All right. And because you're an expert, you're a teacher too. Okay. So we want to believe that this invention is going to work. And this is experimental stage. My mm -hmm. eyes are on you and every other people that you have that okay. are involved in this. But before we go, we're going to make a grading okay. of this whole school and chess. So for your experiences with the school proprietors and stakeholders, how would you rate? Because we've got to rate them with A, C, and F. Okay. A is for excellent, C is for fair, then F is terrible. Terrible, okay. So for schools that you've, you know, come in contact with so far, how would you rate them? For schools, I'll give them on, uh, it depends on the school. Some schools that have showed interest, I'll give them a C. Okay. Because even with the interest they showed, they didn't really show that much of an interest. How would you rate the students, the pupils? The pupils. Because the school did not show that much of an interest, the pupils too will not show that much. Okay, there's a school around, um, uh, around, uh, uh, there's this school I went to, Mac King, it's called Mac King College, around, uh, before Pangrove area. Okay, so this school, they developed interest in it. So, it happened that when we started lectures, okay, it happened that they started their entire sport activity and the thing was really colliding with the classes and stuff. So it was really disturbing us. Okay, how would you read them? Yeah, I'll read them. I'll give them a C because at least they, they acknowledge the fact that chess is good, but it's just that they didn't show that much of an interest. In how would game. you read the government in terms of inventions? For education. For education, inventions like this. Yeah, I would say, I would, I would give them, I would, I will give them a C and I will not give them a F, okay? Because I there, there's the one it happened one time where Opabio did a, um, a um, monopoly and scrabble championship in Akwai Bomb State. Okay, I was following up. Okay, if that happened in Akwai Bomb mm -hmm. State, that's just ten percent in our education system yes. when it has to do with the government. Yes. So you are not able to give them C or F. That means you expect me to allow you give them A. No, I cannot give them A because I can't... Okay, it's, the it's government it has no grade They have no grade that. because I've not seen... I've not <laughs> Until seen. you do something as a serious stakeholder in education system, you have to invent. Okay, if someone like Solomon Israel is saying that chess would enhance teaching and learning process and with all he has explained, it is left for the government to also do something to create more platforms for mm -hmm. chess game to meet with this need so take the assignment right now it's on your screen uh while you're sending the answer for this assignment you go to facebook.com and you know type in four walls on four walls just throw in your answer and we will get that immediately with um the marking don't don't worry i will always mark so it's wonderful having you on the show thank solomon the master much. of chess thank i promise i'm going to enroll with you and okay. learn about chess all right until i see you next time it's four walls and i am mr adolf god bless you and bye